Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, where wealth strategies and investment wisdom collide, featuring your distinguished host and certified financial planner, Bart Zanbergen. Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, showcase for wealth strategies and investment wisdom that's essential for our evolving world. I'm your host, Bart Zanbergen. Paul, it's a lucky day for us. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We have a very special guest, Dina Marciano. Dina, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I wish You're people welcome. could see you beforehand. You're so cruel to your guests. So you're always teasing them and stuff. She's she's a little <laughs> nervous. She comes in. She says, how long is the show? You're like, oh, it's like two hours. She starts to freak out and leave here. <laughs> yeah, there's so few joys in life. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? All right. Well, Dina, I, yes. we're going to get a little closer to the mic. There we go. Um, is a well-renowned and very sought-after interior designer. Uh, but in addition to that, she just is a great person and um, has a really interesting kind of history and background. I, I got a little of it. I can't wait to hear the rest of it. Did I hear she was a gymnast or some other crazy thing? Badminton player. Badminton mm-hmm. player. Oh, yeah. Badminton. Yes. So let's, um, we're going to talk about your business and what you do and why people are, are wanting you so badly to do their house. But um, mm-hmm. you came here from another country. So why don't we start there, wh- sure. what you did there, how you got here, and so on. Yeah, well, I was born in Belarus, which is East Europe, right? part of Russia, um, I guess part of Soviet Union. Sure. So I came in 1995 to United States as a Jewish immigrant. Mm-hmm. with my father and um i actually didn't plan on staying <laughs> <laughs> kind of had my own life in yeah. belarus and i was training for the team now can i ask you i'm just gonna yeah. for one second explain to everybody where belarus is because it's not it was part of the soviet union then it broke mm-hmm. off i think exactly. it did or is it still part of russia no well um no it's its own country in 1993 um became separated when soviet union all this country separated. So basically, what is the it's boundary? On the, yeah. yeah, it's on the border with Poland. Actually, my city is right on the border with Poland. So oh. I used to play badminton for Polish clubs. And um, it's on the west side. So, okay. So, in Ukraine. Did course, badminton border. bring you to the United States? Is that what no. brought you here? or Interesting. Yeah. But it's not. It's just my family yeah. as Jewish immigrants. And, um, as I came with my father, and I already had part of my family here, we kind of, um, he told me, Dina, <laughs> you're just coming just to check it out. <laughs> and if you don't like it, yeah. you can always go back. Yeah. And you're a teenager enough, now or, a, or younger? Um, at that I was time? a teen- okay. teenager. Yes, okay. I was 17. Okay. So, Did you love it when you saw it, or um, were you intimidated? I loved it at first, but I came straight to San Antonio, Texas. So, ah, and I different. started yes, and I studied English right before, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, what language is that?" Like, <laughs> I couldn't understand anyone. <laughs> it's like am I in another country? <laughs> but I really loved people. They were so nice, so yeah. welcoming, and yeah. laid back, and I really fell in love with San Antonio. Yeah. Can I ask one more, one more question? Because somebody else was tweeting here. Everybody went badminton, three question mark, question mark. <laughs> is Belarus a center for badminton? Because I know there are country. there is a big badminton center somewhere here in Orange County. Exactly. There yes. actually is. I knew that. Yes. And I thought it was like Indonesian or something. There was some other country where they mm-hmm. play a lot of badminton. And That is true. Asia. See, Asia, right. But yes. I didn't think of Belarus as a badminton heaven yeah, it's a really big sport. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, there is a big badminton club in Orange County. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I was training there as well. It's up yeah. like in Anaheim or someplace. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I know this. Yeah. Bart's always amazed what I know here. Oh, like, where does that come from? <laughs> 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 Wealth of knowledge. Okay, so you're in San Antonio. You have a hard time understanding everybody. Yes. Uh, How did you get from there? Now, your fa- whole family is there now? A uh, partial. Like, my father yeah. and my mom and my sister still stayed in russia and okay. my grandma my aunt my uncle they were in texas yeah so <laughs> so how'd you get from texas to so you're still playing california mm-hmm. playing badminton in, in texas or did you take a break i was playing badminton yes yeah. actually uh, my father did the research right away we found a club <laughs> in san antonio which yeah. was small and was amazing. Wow. I started traveling in Texas, different um, cities, yeah. and it was really, really nice. I started winning tournaments, yeah. and um, 
I made a team, U.S. team, and I started training. Yeah. And I actually was traveling to California, and that's where... Oh, that's where you probably got the bug, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, beautiful, beautiful state. Yeah. I think I should try to come here. <laughs> So mm-hmm. then at some point, you, you did you leave your family and move out here? Or? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got into a relationship. It was yeah. fun. And, yeah. Um, yes, and I left okay. San Antonio. And I, yeah. it was, I kind of was traveling back and forth. I had yeah. badminton club in Texas yeah. as well. And I was coaching children. Oh, nice. I was going to college. So I had a lot going modeling. Yeah. A lot of modeling. Yeah. So. Did you start modeling Teachers. in Russia or here yeah. in California? In or Russia. in, in States? I okay. started in Belarus, and then yeah. I, I kind of continued everything what I was doing in Belarus, oh, yeah? but yeah. in United States, which yeah. was great. So, And um, I was a little homesick, and then as I was going back, each time I was going back to Russia, yeah. I was like, no, I think I'm becoming more <laughs> American. <laughs> more American? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. it happens. That's why, mm-hmm. why we're overpopulated. <laughs> 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 but I really loved it. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. All right. So Mm -hmm. that's a great lead in. So how did you get from there to this amazing interior designer? Well, interesting story because my ex-husband and I were building a house in Irvine Cove. Yeah. I, it was a big, long project that took us 12 years, basically. 12 years? (laughs) During that time. Yes. (laughs) I finished school (laughs) of interior design. (laughs) You can get a doctor's degree. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It was a lot of, I mean, fun, challenges, and yeah, it led me to open my own, actually. Okay, so design you... Design studio. So mm-hmm. you got an interest in design while you were building the house. Yes. You went to the school. You exactly. came out, interior designer then, on the other end. Mm-hmm. And during that time, I was also did um, surgery center for one of our friends. Okay. And physical therapy clinic and orthopedic. Oh, so you do industrial... Is that, is that called commercial. industrial or commercial, commercial design? Yes. Okay. Really different than mm-hmm. home, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, different. But I, I really like it. I like, I mean, I like it both. It's yeah. still pleasing people and designing something that yeah, so important. I think in this world, right? That's so nice. Do you and have a tendency to put little nets up or little birdies in the thing? <laughs> design is this? Is this do, you, do you build in your badminton experience? Yeah, when I do commercial. Yeah, <laughs> I, I play <laughs> with all my. <laughs> I, it took me a second. Birdie, yeah. and like badminton. Yes, birdie, I'm that's a little true. slow, Paul. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, got shuttlecock, it. but birdie. Yes, got it, got mm-hmm. it. Um, <laughs> did you have you ever worked for a, a firm, or has it always just been you on your own? Interesting, but I never worked within a firm. Yeah, it's kind of word to mouth. Yeah, so far, even big projects. Yes. Yeah. So now I'm working with developers. Kind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just got lucky. Oh, so the developers are ne- you, or mm-hmm. it's kind of your network now, and they'll bring you in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I work with so those are usually them. probably big projects or custom homes or something. Yeah, some of them um, custom homes, and yeah. but most of them are just um, flip houses or oh. for sale. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so you, is that called staging when you get ready f- for um, for that? I do usually design from ground up, and um, I include staging as well yeah. because for me, house has to look complete. Yeah, completed when it's. I mean, it's all compliments. Interior has to complement the architecture. So right. I tried to do everything. Right. Wow. In one project. <laughs> um, so how, what are some of the projects that you're working on now? I work um, on a few projects, and they're in, um, thank God, in Laguna yeah. and Newport, which yeah. is so easy to get to. And um I really enjoy it, and uh, yeah. they're basically big projects, like seven, eight thousand square feet houses. And how, and, how long do those mm-hmm. projects generally last? Usually, it depends. Um, a year, two years, I think I would say the yeah. longest two years. But it depends on challenges, of course. Like yeah. in this one particular house, I designed and fabricated everything in Italy. So, and Italy is the country. I love it. They just take their time a little bit and yeah. they're really enjoying life and like august you know the whole month they're taking off so uh-huh. <laughs> we're like oh my gosh <laughs> we're gonna do for here. A month. yes when yeah. you work with developers everything has to be time yeah you know scheduled and so we're yeah. having a little bit of challenge with the timing but once you get that beautiful my yeah. gosh yeah 
manufactured furniture and details are so important and they do such an incre- incredible job. Do your clients um, watch you through the project or is it like a big reveal at the end? Yeah, we work basically through the project. When it's a personal, a client, their own house, yes, yeah. I work very closely every day. And yeah. But with developers, they just kind of, they trust me. I think that's so important and yeah. I got so lucky that yeah. I've got developer who really trusts me and I kind of do my own yeah. thing and we've got a great team. Well, that's, that's amazing. Yes. What are some of the, um, like the biggest challenges you face in your, in this career? Um, interesting, but, um, like I said, so far it's just basically having furniture manufactured and design in Italy, okay. but just the timing, but overall I would say getting the right people right team yeah but once you get that team and who's for you who's the team are they the installers it's basically yeah it's installers and it's um contractors okay subcontractors and yeah. different parts like yeah. and each part yeah plumbers so once you get the right team this is it yeah so I think I'm almost there. <laughs> so I only just learned recently as I was mm-hmm. talking to some clients that were building a house. I thought when you when you contract with a contractor mm-hmm. and included pretty much everything like the tile, the and and the fixtures and all that. And uh, my client was telling me, no, that's that you do so much with the contractor, and it's the designer who who right. you, you pick the tile and get the tile from and the fixtures and many other things. So that's that's normal. Yes, um, I think it all depends on the project. Like some contractors, they they can do all of that. They can provide, of course, but you don't get as much as designer where they put, they got more, I would say, knowledge. And yeah. So I do everything pretty much. Tile, colors, yeah. kitchen design, yeah. <laughs> bathrooms, vanities, yeah. everything. Yeah, lighting. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. um, uh, Dina, for those who don't know, is, is actually pretty well published. She gets her stuff in magazines all the time. So you're, you're getting to be very well known for your work. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very fortunate that yeah. I'm able to. Somebody yeah. wants to know, somebody tweeted in, what kind of design trends are running through Orange County these days? Anything everything i i'm an old guy it all just looks like chaos to me <laughs> you know i liked it when it was a theme now it's all right. just you know postmodern industrial yeah. with uh, romantic flourishes and uh mediterranean touches and i i don't get any of it so what's what are you designing so these days true. what's hot i mean there are so many varieties but what's hot right now i would say um it's very individual it's so individual because and I'm very different to be honest. I'm probably like the not the right even person to answer this question because I I'm so different and I try to just make it very timeless, like combining classic and that's what I'm trying to do, something more profound and that stays forever. Yeah, so you don't have to change it every ten yeah, years. Yeah, you don't have to change it. That's it's so meaningful. Yeah. And whatever piece of furniture or architecture it just stays there forever. But and it's interesting, it just makes you very, not only tranquil, but just yeah. relaxed and, yeah, but there are a lot of trends. What is, what is a there. trend now? Is it... Um, like using um, Calicata stone, there is a trend, like it's everywhere, I would say. And, um, and what is that? I have no idea oh, what that is. <laughs> that's marble type oh. of stone. <laughs> oh, marble. Got can't call it marble mm-hmm. anymore. Come on, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought it was a Spanish stone. <laughs> 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 Oh, you right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that stone is pretty much used everywhere now, and um, it's still beautiful stone. But yeah. and what else? What's trend? Trend? That's I, oh yeah, it's more. Oh, so sorry, did I interrupt? No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, it's more of this rustic look. I would say, like everywhere. I think everywhere you go, um, either like restoration the coffee hardware shop, style. Yes, kinda. I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Distressed Rusted, chairs. Distressed, other, well, yes. Yeah. Right? You yeah. even know. So you yeah. know the trend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right? Yeah, so it's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can tell by shorts. My, 
my whole home has always looked you distressed, know. and now it's back in fashion again here. <laughs> Every 30 years, this house goes yes. in. <laughs> For 20 years, it looks horrible. Then all of a sudden, people go, hmm, that looks kind of cool, those beat-up old chairs and everything. No, it's interesting, because I went to the, re- the – Bart will be amazed – my wife dragged me down to uh, Dana Point. They had a, like a street fair, and they called it the Redo Market, a sort of maker's market. And it was all this kind of stuff. I'm like, you want $1,000 for an old beat-up chair that somebody <laughs> scratched and scrapped? Uh, there was like all this beat-up stuff that right. had character to it. And it was all expensive. And it just looked like stuff somebody had thrown away to me. Yeah, but. It's kind of like maybe a very authentic piece. Yeah, and right. It's exactly. like a museum. Yeah, it's very meaningful. So my friend yesterday, who's building house, he's doing Spanish contemporary. I hadn't even heard of that style. That's that, another. I think people just um, have their own styles. Yeah, and they just what call it Spanish their own styles. Contemporary means right. what modern so, Spanish. Spanish seems old world, and mm-hmm. you know. So and, maybe they combine. And it's but, on the water. He's it's, he's wow. building a house on the bay. So it's a, I think it's an interesting style for that location. Yes. So I think it's so individual yeah. and personal. Well, for years, right? everything was that Mediterranean stuff. We're supposed to look like we're in the south of France or Italy or Spain or something like that here. Yeah. I don't think people are. I mean, those houses exist and they're beautiful. I don't know yeah. if that's the, the I, No, I don't think it trend. is. I think any trend, when it's done with a beautiful taste and style. Yeah. So my early that's Home right. Depot style is okay? That's <laughs> yeah, if you did a good job, if you put everything together. and <laughs> I, I don't like clutter, like for me personally. Yeah, I'm very, like I, I said, I'm a little different. She looks at her studio. <laughs> <laughs> I need to design a little bit. <laughs> um, I was just going to have you took the words out of my mm-hmm. mouth. It, it, it feels like there's a push or a trend towards like a less is more, clean mm-hmm. lines, clean... Yeah. Less less knickknacks. Yes, and it's kind of it's proven actually. Yeah. Proven I thought it was going to be that for a while they were building in, along the beaches these kind of almost um, concrete homes, mm-hmm. and and every room was like concrete floor and concrete walls, and there was nothing in it. It felt like you were walking into a museum or something, and there was one piece <laughs> highlighted on the wall or something. You know, very minimalistic. Yeah. But that didn't seem to last. I don't know. That doesn't seem to be the trend. Yeah. So there is um, like in life relationship anything it has to be a balance right so when it's just a perfect balance when you find that balance when you just walk into the space and you have that ah oh, wow effect yeah. right then so do you design to the space or to the clients is it a balance of what you see there or a balance of what they who they are and what they want to see i think it's very important to see who they are and design a space that represents them of course so they feel it's their own space. And so yeah, how does that but, happen? So, like, mm-hmm. um, you meet a new client, and what's the process? We go out a lot, and we drink a lot. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We get to know each other. No, no, no. We're in the wrong we just, business. <laughs> we lighten up. <laughs> We're in the wrong business. Remember this single? Right? <laughs> yes, it's a fun business. <laughs> I can oh, tell yeah. you that. I love what I do. But no, I just Twitter just some... lit up here, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of people want to do business with you. <laughs> okay, that's good. Well, yeah, so we kind of, I want to get to know them. So I, I talk to them a lot. I show them different, um, ask them a lot of questions. And I see their belongings and their house. I see their house and existing houses. So then I get a feel who they are and um, what they Give me they a question want. you'd ask. You just, Bart wants, wants to redo his house, you know, his wife's Tahitian, so they've got just thatched stuff everywhere it looks like it's all tahitian Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's lots of uh tiki art and everything there so uh, so what would you ask bart right well i know him okay i I mean (laughs) ask me all right you don't know me all right so i'm a a multi-millionaire i'm building a new house what do you want what do you want me to do oh what do you want yeah i would i would probably go to your existing house and see and ask you like what would you like like what what are you in your stage of life that what do you feel like having in your house like what makes you happy what makes you like what colors makes you happy there's and so I many kind bad of answers show, to that right? <laughs> <laughs> right that doesn't relate to design <laughs> oh my god okay. you didn't know what you were getting into did you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever get people I'm, I'm sorry I'm taking this over but I'm fascinated because uh, I used to work a lot in entertainment industry Hollywood somebody would become a star that doesn't mean okay so suddenly you're Johnny Depp and, and two years ago, you were a struggling actor working as, as a waiter. You have no design taste whatsoever. 
but you got to build a $50 million house. And they quite often will, uh, Jim Carrey did this. They just literally say, here's the house, here's the keys, I go design that. something. Yeah. Do you ever get that? That would be, yes, I actually, I, I consider lucky because I think people come they, to me because they already know my style. They yeah. already, they want my style. They want, they like it. And basically they just want me to design their house. They yeah. trust me again. So, and of course I, we collaborate Okay. But it's very it's very important when you have that trust and collaboration and interaction with your client where you yeah. really make their dream co- house come true. Let's talk about the business aspect for a second. Did yeah. you ever, I think I know the answer, um, mm-hmm. there's not a right or wrong, but did you ever like, all right, here's my business plan, this is what I'm going to do, this is, and you kind of design what your business was going to look like? Or oh my gosh, I'm so spontaneous. Just like for this meeting, I, I came without notes. But I wish she came in yeah. running 30 seconds before <laughs> showtime. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm, no, but I definitely had vision. A vision. Yes, okay, that's vision. good. I always have vision. And yeah. yes, I write things down as well. But yeah, I know exactly, as far as design, I know, and business, I, I know yeah. exactly what I want and what yeah. I want. And I'm very particular. Yeah. Yeah. So like... It's, Many people, mm-hmm. like, well, I'll use doctors, for example. They go to school to become a doctor, and then they were never taught a thing about business. And so that's right. something that they strive. Did you, do you have a business sense, um, or did you, did you learn that anywhere? Or are you just strictly, In boom, school, I'm an we artist? Learned, we, we learned about business sense, yeah, like okay. design business. Yeah. But um, I think the life experience, that's what really okay. is the, the best school. Yeah, that's where I really learned yeah. how to do business, and I think I'm still learning what's the best way, because I'm still expanding yeah. and thinking different ways of expanding my business, and so I'm still yeah. learning that business aspect. Right. And then mm-hmm. to shift gears a little bit, you're a single mom, and so how do you ba- you you balance how do you it. balance that? I love it. I love single life and uh, <laughs> I don't I mean I'm from marriage but <laughs> I just love being free and I think because I'm sharing children um 50/50 with my ex-husband I think okay. that allows me There's some time. Yes, yeah. time to really devote to my work and to devote to my children 100%. Like when right. I have them I'm with them. So you're there and you're yes. in. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that kind of the secret so you you're yes. in with you're there and then when they're when you're at work you're I'm completely like Yeah. Yes, in my work and yeah. dedicating all my time. And I love it. I love <laughs> it so much. I think that's why I'm probably successful because I'm really very passionate about what I do. And yeah. I just want people to get inspired. <laughs> yeah. Do you still play but badminton? Uh, oh, my gosh. I went to play badminton like three weeks ago. I lost all my toenails because uh. it was... <laughs> 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 yeah, it was what? so hard. Yeah, because it's such an impact on your feet. And I went yeah. like really like... You I thought I'm still professional. Out. And, yeah. you know, you still have that competitiveness. Yeah. And, yeah. Is, um, <laughs> is badminton one versus one or is it a team two, two? Oh, or? it's just like tennis. So it's singles, doubles, and mixed doubles. Oh, okay. So I used to play three, all three ca- categories. Yeah. So when I... When playing, <laughs> but it's amazing because it's the fastest um, sports out of all the racket sports. Yeah. Yeah, you're moving pretty fast, huh? Yeah. <laughs> kind of want to go back again just to play for fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, I, um, as we're nearing the end, I mm-hmm. get to ask my guests the, um, the um, last final question, and that is what is your ultimate lesson learned? either through your life lessons and, and what brought you here to the States or, or as a business person, as an interior designer? As a lesson, very interesting question. We don't ask dull questions here. We ask the good no, ones. No, it's like a really nice question. Unfortunately, she Just, has no answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to you. Yeah. Get back okay, to you. I'm going to start speaking Russian now. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I think I learned just to continue being myself because it's very important. I, as I noticed after, you know, coming from another country, I think it's very important just to be yourself and have a vision of your life and just proceed, proceed your goals and yeah. have fun and yeah. be positive. Those are, those are great. Really good spontaneous yeah. answer <laughs> from you. a spontaneous person. <laughs> I like to ask sometimes your guilty pleasure, and I know one of yours, and any guy mm-hmm. listening would be so envious of your watch collection because what? you wear mostly guys' watches, which look really great on you. So what are you wearing Thank today? 
Um, IWC. A, okay. Accommodating. So. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. I really do like men's watches. Why guys' like watches? Why not feminine, delicate girls' watches? Why are these big, monstrous? She's yeah. an artist, Paul. She's an artist, right? And I have a kind of a big hand. You and, do uh, not. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Come in a good on. way. <laughs> not like a man, but, <laughs> but I, I have varieties of watches. So yeah. I do wear, I just have a tendency to wear, yeah, How'd that happen? Big watches. When, when did you like, hey, I'm going to try on a guy's watch, and then how did it stick? Yeah, interesting. I just, um, huh. I don't know, just got inspired to wear big watches. <laughs> Every time I go to the watch store, I just love it. And not all the men's watches. Like, I wish, because there's such a beautiful collection yeah. of men's. Like, yeah. So hopefully we'll get there when women's collection will get more. Do you walk in and do, the, do these people behind the counter say, oh, ma'am, you need to go over here? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, I want to yes, stay right here. I want to stay where the men are. <laughs> I mean, when men's watches. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, oh, Dina. This has so been a lot much. of fun. How do people you. reach you? Yeah, how do people reach you? How do they reach me? Okay. <laughs> like website uh, or yes, email? Yes, website. Mm -hmm. Which uh, is? It's dinamarcianodesign.com. Okay. And, um, or my email, Dina, well, actually, the email is there as At well. The website. So it's website. And let's spell all that, because Dina could be multiple ways. Right. Marciano, I can only guess, yeah. Yeah, it's actually guess. I mean. The same. The same. The same guess. Guess. Yes. Okay, right. Yeah. So how do you, how do you spell Dina? In the so it's D-I-N-A, D as a David, not Gina, Dina, D-I-N-A, Marciano, design.com. All right. Okay. All right. All right, everyone. Thank you. Well, Dina, again, thanks so much. Thanks for everyone who has tuned in. We look forward to being in the studio again next week. Cheers. Thank you. Tune in next week for the latest edition of the Zanbergen Report, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Catch up on our recent shows by visiting bartzanbergen.podbean.com. The Zanbergen Report is also available on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Interested in being a featured guest on our show or have a question you'd like to hear us answer? Email podcast at bartzanbergen.com. Bart A. Zanbergen, CFP, and Letitia Burbaum, AIF, are registered investment advisors with Optivest, Inc., and registered representatives with Gramercy Securities, Inc., member FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services are offered by Optivist, Inc., under SEC registration.